Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and today we've got a pretty fun video. Today we're gonna to be talking about 3D printing speed and how to print faster and stronger parts. It is a pretty common thing that I hear people say that 3D printing is slow, especially people that are new to 3D printing. And sure, there are things you can do, like bump up your printing speeds on a well-tuned in 3D printer. You can, uh, you can get some pretty decent speeds out of it, but there is a tipping off point where your printer cannot possibly lay down filament and cool it quick enough. So your prints start to look uh, not as pretty, their tolerances go out of whack, and the parts just end up not being usable after a certain point. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what I have been doing for prints that I need that are relatively large or uh, just bigger in size and how I've been able to cut down on printing time. So let's get into it. So most of the things I've been doing since I got into 3D printing haven't necessarily been large. They're relatively small things, little functional parts, hooks. I mean, I print all sorts of things, but mo the majority of what I'm printing is relatively small and maybe the size of my fists are a little bit smaller, a little bit larger, give or take. But as of the last few months or year here, I've had to print some relatively large parts. We're talking parts that are, you know, eight inches by four inches or, uh, you know, eight inches by eight inches or just, just more mass than ever before. And uh, during this process, there's been a lot of things that I've been designing specifically for my CO2 laser where I had to prototype a couple times and the parts took forever because I'd print out a part, I'd wait you know, 24 hours or so, get my part, crap, my tolerances weren't exactly right. Oh, I like this design better. Gotta go back, change it, reprint it. And it takes a really long time. Well, I went ahead and tried something that I haven't really done too much in the past before this, and I had really good results. So this part and these two parts right here might look identical, but what if I told you that one of these parts took less than half of the time or half of the time that uh, one of the other parts took? And in order to do that, it was incredibly simple. Um, so all I really did was I went and I swapped out the nozzle on my 3D printer, which on most 3D printers, the standard nozzle's diameter is a 0.4 millimeter. Well, I swapped them out for one of those to a 0.6 millimeter, where I was able to print at 0.3 or 300 micron layer lines. And on the other one, I swapped out for a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, where I was able to print at 400 micron layer lines. And by doing that, I substantially cut down the time. And for those prints, the geometries on them are not crazy enough where I ran into any issues, even at those sizes when those aren't necessarily big prints, but um, I was again able to save a ton of time and I thought that that was a really good example. So most 3D printers, and this won't apply for all, but most of them do have swappable nozzles. The most common is gonna be an M6 thread, which is like the E3D standard nozzle. And those are relatively short and there's a couple of printers that I've got now, which is the Sidewinder and the Genius printer from Artillery, which actually use a Volcano hot end. And so it's still using the M6 threaded nozzle, but this one is roughly twice as long. And what that does is it gives you an even larger melt zone. So the plastic is melted quicker and higher up and you are able to get filament really flowing. So all I went ahead and did was I unscrewed the 0.4 millimeter nozzle that came on my 3D printer, purchased larger nozzles online. I got a 0.6 and a 0.8 and a whole variety of them. I screwed in a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, changed up literally one or two settings on my slicer and reprinted it and the part turned out awesome. I've actually fully uh, changed over from using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to a permanent 0.6 millimeter nozzle on my uh, artillery sidewinder. Because this machine is pretty large and prints take a while, a 0.6 still lets you get really, really nice detail, but the parts again are so much quicker. It is absolutely, it is absolutely insane. A couple of things that I'd recommend is, let's say for one, maybe in the end of it all, you do want to go back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's great, but if you're printing big parts, why not throw on a bigger nozzle, knock out all your prototyping, knock out all of your revisions, and then when you're finally going down to the final print, you're happy with everything, then put on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and knock out the slower print if you need to have that, that higher resolution. But for me, if there's anything that I'm printing that's of that size, the layer lines don't necessarily matter to me as much and it's more the functional part that is what I'm going after. This has been a huge time saver and one of the, one of my favorite things that I've really done, I can't believe that I rocked a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for so long before trying out a larger sized uh, nozzle. And really the only thing that I've changed now is 
I do bump up my temperatures. So for PLA, for example, on a standard 3D printer, I'm printing at roughly uh, 215 Celsius. Well, when I went to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, I bumped that up to a 225 Celsius. And when I went to a 0.8 nozzle, I bumped that up to 230, 235 Celsius. And the reason being is because you're pushing more plastic, which is you know flowing out quicker. So to compensate for that and to make sure that the filament is flowing accordingly, increasing the temperature has helped me a lot. And it also helps to ensure that the plastic is truly molten and that I'm getting um, proper layer adhesion from one layer to the next. But if you've been wanting to print larger parts, I highly recommend you pick up some nozzles and swap them out on your machine if that's something that your machine will allow you to do. Most standard machines like Creality's, the Prusa's, um, artilleries, I mean really most everything out there does have a relatively standard nozzle that is not uh, difficult to swap out. Not only does this allow you to print at wider layer lines, so instead of a 0.2 layer you can go to a 0.3 or a 0.4 or maybe even a 0.5, but when it's laying down the material, when it's coming out of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and now you're going out of a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, you're laying down 50% more material per pass, which means that it doesn't have to do quite as many passes. So a combination of being able to do wider layer lines as far as the, um, the like Z, Z height goes, as well as having to do less passes back and forth in order to fill in your infill or to fill in your parameters, it really saves a ton of time and the parts come out looking awesome. All these parts would work for whatever the person designing them for wanted them for because they're they're just damn good parts. I highly recommend that you play around with a larger nozzle. It is a ton of fun. It is great for even just screwing around with vases. But again, for me, it's been super great for printing out large parts for my CO2 laser, like the exhaust parts I've been printing out and just to get parts knocked out as quickly as possible. They don't need to look really pretty. They're functional, they're not for the aesthetic, and yeah, it has been awesome. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have played around with different nozzle diameters, or if after watching this and seeing these prints, that is something that you want to consider doing, because I, again, have just been blown away, and this is now my dedicated machine for just printing out prints that need to be large and to get them out quicker, and then I've got another machine which has just got a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle for all of my other kind of traditional 3D printing, which is definitely a plus of having multiple machines. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe if you have not. Thank you guys to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. I love your faces and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. On that note, I am out. Peace guys.